Hello guys, it's Unders on today's Logic Pro tutorial. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways you can do side chaining and the side chain pumping effect easily inside Logic. Let's get into that. Say my name out loud. Hello guys, here we are in Logic. So we're going to have a look at side chaining and side chain pumping effects. If this video is helpful for you, please bash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. If you've got any questions or other videos you would like to see, throw that in the comments down below. So essentially, the sidechain pumping effect is something really, really present in modern EDM, dance music and house. However, it's been around for a really long time. Um, you were able to do it on the SSL desks and things like the Neve VR Legend desk from sort of the late 60s, early 70s. And it was used primarily to mix kick drums and things that contained two sets of low frequency information together so they would work musically. So the same principle still applies. We generally use it to be driven by the kick drum to remove other low frequency material so that we can have a punchy kick and it stands out in the mix and they don't conflict too much. So the way we do it inside Logic, there's a couple of ways to do it and there's a couple of ways we can play around with the effect and have it working. Primarily, we're going to use the compressor. So we know how to load the compressor up at this point. We select the channel we want it to be on and we can click the little bar just here above where the EQ representation is, or we can click down here and add a compressor. Now in this case, I've got the vintage opto up because it's what was working in this track. Now in the top menu here, this black bar, if you can't see the same information that I have, click this little gray tab towards the top right, and you'll see it appears here. We're gonna look at the bit called sidechain. Now, this says audio one for me, which was this blow up 128 BPM loop, and it is a piece of audio. And what it is, is the kick driven audio that affects this bass line. Now, if we choose sidechain on this compressor, we can actually listen to what it's sidechained to. And we've done that by selecting sidechain we go to the filter section and we choose listen and what this is showing us is the audio that is passing through this filter set up here which is a low pass and then a frequency filter so again we get this so that is the value that's going to be triggering this compressor but the material that's going to compress is going to be this And you hear straight away how it gets that pumping effect. If I disable it, it's a very static sound, but if we reintroduce it, you hear how it then suddenly has the rhythm to go along with the kick that is controlling the compression. Now this is compressing quite heavily. I'd normally go around the three decibel mark, but this is pushing all the way down to five decibels of reduction. So it's reducing this signal, which is the bass signal by five decibels to bring the kick up. It doesn't affect the audio of the kick that is purely controlling what this compressor does. And the only audio that is affected is the audio of the bass channel. So we can have a listen to that whole concept now. And now if I disable it, we'll hear it's a lot more static and the kick loses its punch. So it clears up a lot more space in the mix. Now there is something else that we can do with this. If we were to take this particular channel that is triggering the audio, which is this, Now, bear in mind, we were only able to hear a small part of it. And the reason for that is because we were listening to it through this filter here. So we listen to the filter. We just get the low end. I can change the frequency. But then it will respond to more parts of that audio that we don't want. So we bring it back down to around here.
Now, perhaps we wanted to keep that baseline in play, but we didn't want the audit, the kick drum to be triggering, but we wanted to keep the rhythm going. We can mute these pieces of audio. Now, when they're muted, this happens. There's no response and we've lost that rhythm part, which is really unfortunate. However, if we don't mute the pieces of audio and we instead mute the channel itself, it still responds, even though that audio can't be heard. So if we listen to this, so we can now listen to the whole track with out the kick in. And this is known as having a ghost sidechain. So we could recreate this entire channel and we could copy all of the audio from it. And we could have it so that it always, always is affecting this bass line. So if we choose the compressor, we'll need to change this now. And it's going to be the other one here, audio nine. Now if we have this track always muted, but it will still always affect the audio, no matter what which even means on a section where there would perhaps be no drums, such as here. And we're able to maintain the rhythm that has been used and the ear has gotten used to. Whereas if we didn't do that, it doesn't sound as natural for it to suddenly stop. Yeah. So that's known as having a ghost sidechain. We have a control channel. And the other upside to that is you can use any piece of audio. It doesn't have to be the same loop. It could be something else that gives a, a different rhythm or even we could change it. So this responds differently. So it only responds to the high points here. That allows us a lot more flexibility without having to affect our audio channel or our kick channel or whatever it is that you were using to accentuate the baseline in this case. So guys, I hope that was a helpful little tip for you. I hope you have a lot of fun using uh, ghost sidechains there and generally sidechaining your tracks. It's very simple to do in Logic. I'm just gonna throw one last thing out. One of my absolute favorites I have a preset here called FET DMB side. It's using the Studio FET emulation inside of Logic. And this gives a load of extra sound and rhythm into what we're doing. And is by far my favorite way to do this. It's a really noisy compressor and it adds a lot of extra like whooshes and feeling to the track. It's really great for doing that. That's my personal favorite way of doing it. It adds an extra rhythm and extra sound in. Um, on this particular track, we went with the vintage Opto though. Guys, I hope this video has been helpful for you. If it has, please bash a like on it, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you on the next one. Thank you very much.